Susie Peniston. And finally, quarter past seven, you with BBC Radio Cumbria for a Monday evening. Uh, we are embarking now on, well, it's a treat. And it's always a treat when you get Steve Wharton in the studio. Uh, good Hello. evening, sir. Hello. You're right. <laughs> Grand, yes. It doesn't seem five minutes since you were last year. Uh, no, actually, it's a few weeks, isn't it? A couple of weeks, although I was oh, in Carlisle again then. today with the, the kids from Frisington School. Yes, you were doing your... Yeah, continuing to do Cum- the Cumbrian, Cumbrian Award with them. Yes, your Cumbrian yeah. Award. I was going to say Cumbrian Studies, but it's similar, similar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so they've um, progressed now. So we went, been doing some... Um, looking at Robert Anderson, and so we went to see the plaque to him and his gravestone in Carlisle Cathedral and in the grounds, and um, also popped to Tully House to learn more about the Reavers and the Border Ballads. Oh, so some swashbuckling stuff Yeah, this afternoon. Oh, well, great. this is excellent, very good. Now then, the reason you're here this evening, well, I hope you don't mind this, this isn't any kind of a demotion, but, you know, and, and Johnny Campbell, I think you know you've made it when you've, you've got your own minder and chauffeur. Bringing you into a radio <laughs> studio. Good evening, sir. How are you? All good. Yourself? Very well, thank you. And thank you for being with us. And thank, thank you, you to Steve for enabling you to be here as well. Because uh, this is sort of a spillover from last night in Maryport. That's right, yeah. Um, thank you very much, Steve, for booking us uh, last night. And I'm um, sure Steve can let you know a little bit more about the Made in Maryport events. But, uh, yeah, last night, first time in Maryport, which is unsurprising. Um, but it's great to, yeah, great to perform in Cumbria once again. And, um, yeah, and great to be here Good tonight gig. too. Yes. Yeah. Last night was really nice to uh, meet a few people who, uh, yeah, Facebook friends that just haven't seen ever before you know that's the beauty of uh, going around traveling and touring is that you get to put a face to a name properly you know and when you say yeah. traveling and touring mm. in your case that's international yeah. travel and touring taking your well your brand of folk songs mm. all over the world so i mean you must never be in one place for that long uh, not too long no um this i mean this year well, just just come back from a tour in uh, the Netherlands and Germany, and so this is part of a, a tour in in England that I'll be performing um, quite a few other places like Manchester, Sheffield, and last night was Maryport. So it's it's nice to be able to bring a bit of uh, Northern English uh, kind of like culture and history and folk song to anybody who wishes to hear it. And last night uh, was Maryport. Yeah. Now then, how do you define Northern English? And, and what's different about Northern English folk song? I mean, I don't think there's any argument about Cumbria being mm, Northern English. Yeah. Um, but but you know, it, 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 what's distinctive about? Well, I, I can only say for myself, I think that the, the music that I do, it, it kind of focuses on uh, regional Northern English history uh, and uh, radical working class, um, yeah, Northern English history with that. So, um yeah, what I what I will focus on, especially with a couple of the songs that I'll perform tonight, is tying down. Well, well, one of the songs w- which will be played is uh, "Right to Rome," which is uh, linked with a lot with the Kinder Trespass, which was uh, in 1930, ooh, 32, um, in Derbyshire. In Derbyshire, yeah, which um, spawned. Well, which was catalyst for a. A lot of the uh, land access movement rights that have happened, um, well, since really. So, um, yeah, looking at it, looking at it from that kind of perspective, yeah. Mm, so it's a real sort of, I suppose, working class history, if you like, but in the broader sense. I mean, we're not necessarily talking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just um, you know, especially with that song, anyway. Um, that looks upon. Um, it's it's looking at the underdog and looking at especially you know I think I think hiking and the connection with the land is is a very kind of uh, a very kind of like English a very British kind of thing and uh, it was nice in Maryport last night that a few people came along uh, who were who were very passionate about hiking very passionate about their connection to the land so I think that's potentially what the music that I do um, uh, yeah the people who come along. Uh, are definitely hikers. Yeah. <laughs> that that connection with landscape is, is integral to what mm. to what you do. Yeah, and and you know how how the one spawns the other, the music and the and the mm. connection or, or whatever. We'll we'll talk a little bit about hopefully this yeah. evening uh, as well. But the the, the song that you, you've just spoken about there, mm. a, a right to Rome. What you've done with it is because I, I know you've got a bit of a penchant for 
singing on the tops of hills and, uh-huh. and fells, which we will again also explore a little bit more by yourself. Sort of, I suppose it's the equivalent of an artist painting on plein air in mm. a way. You, you actually go in out and recording mm. what you sing and what you create, yeah, on plein air. Yeah, I mean, especially with, uh, I mean, I'll speak about it a bit later with this uh, album that I'll do later in the year, which, well, I'll release later in the year, should I say, uh, which is recording on Northern English County High Points. So taking a a rucksack full of recording equipment and a guitar, which I took up Scaffold Pike, which I'm sure your listeners know is the highest point of Cumbria and uh, highest point of England. It's a hard enough place to get up to without taking a guitar and a rucksack full of recording equipment. So, um so trying to record, especially just with three takes, making sure that um, yeah, one of those is useful. And thankfully, one of them always has been. But it's, it's just recording at that very moment in time. It's a very spontaneous kind of thing. And I think for me, it's a bit of like an antithesis of um, uh, kind of like the, the stale re- uh, environments of recording the inside studio. a studio, basically. Mm bit more manufactured and twiddling with knobs and all that business yeah it's it's um it's something that's a bit more raw and a bit more connected to that that time and space right at that moment and nothing's been fiddled around with it it's just that place that moment and with a studio recording it could have been days of just trying to get the perfect thing and the perfect thing is often just that thing that is just that moment so that's that's the way that's the way i'm looking at it with this particular project oh i sense many a story with this project Mm. as well but i think we ought to listen to a right to Rome just to get us give us a little bit of a feel of i suppose your concerns Mm-hmm. as a lyricist lyricist mm-hmm. and as a, as a musician um, but what you've done with this is n- not recorded it on the top of a hill necessarily mm-hmm. not not on the version that we're going to hear anyway uh-huh. you have incorporated some of the best of northern instrumental tradition mm. with the brass band yeah um it was a collaborative piece that was released um, for the 90th anniversary of the uh, Kinder Mass Trespass last year, which uh, has the Skelman Thought Brass Band uh, on it, uh, which we had to go into a studio to record. Um, and also the Commoners Choir, who are a, um, a radical voice choir from Leeds, a uh, 50, 60 piece um, voice choir. So. Um, yeah, getting a brass band on one of my recordings has always been a, a, a lifelong ambition. So uh, being able to do that is, you know, it's perfect, basically. In 1649, to St. George's Hill they come. The diggers came to show the people's will. The landlords they despise, the clergy they defy to reclaim. Rightly what was ours Through courage, through might Embodied the people's plight Their homes and crops raised to the roots below Their struggle is not in vain We'll sing of them again In this quest for the right to roam Rising plumes of acrid smoke Bellowed out those words you choke a plan to liberate the working folk When Rothman heard the call To the moorland for to stroll Free the other from the bondage of a few For just one day a week On a Sunday for a seek Bid adieu to the clack for moorland air Their struggle is not in vain We'll sing of them again in his quest for the right to roam. Over Pike fell Clough and Moor, amongst the bracken. I think of those who have gone before 
Wayne Wright, Wordsworth, and McCall, Coleridge, Clare, and many more, though these lines permit to name a few. So I'll roam where I will, over mountain and hill, lie where the sun kiss rock entices me. The struggle is not in vain, we'll sing of them again in this quest. Johnny Campbell's A Right to Rome featuring the Commoners Choir and the Skelmanthorpe Brass Band. What is it, Johnny, about that the brass band? That I, I, I've got goosebumps. Mm. I mean, and the way that the, the, the three musical entities, if you like, you, the choir and the brass band sort of merge together on that. It's, it's, it's fabulous. I think the, the thing is with brass bands, they're, they're so evocative and... Uh, I think for whatever reason they they have a synonymity with the with Yorkshire, and um, I think just just thinking like especially people think that you know like the Hovis advert with um, Vorjak's New World Symphony they they see the advert which is uh, actually filmed in Dorset but people think it's in Yorkshire and people think that even that New World Symphony has got. Um, I think Vorjak is a um, a Czech composer. I think <laughs> um, yeah, just. It's just the yeah the evocative kind of feeling of the the brass band that a lot of people just have with the north, but more specifically Yorkshire, that they get a feeling with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is it's something about the tone, I think, as well. There's like a hint of melancholy mm. in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Isn't there just? Mm. But oh, that, that's a fabulous combination. Although yeah, you, you were there solo as well. So so that idea of of you performing, you know. On plein air that we were talking about yeah. just before, that, that's kind of encapsulated in that as mm. well. Yeah, I mean, it, everybody was recorded in their own places for that. It wasn't recorded together, and um, yeah, I managed just that recording was just myself and guitar, and just took the guitar out, and everybody did their own parts in in their own in their own way. And I'm, I'm always in awe of people who can read music. So the the brass band went in there without even hearing the song, and all went in individually, and they'd never heard it, but just went in straight away and did their thing, and and it came out like that. So. Um, yeah, yeah. It's nice. Oh, de- oh, absolutely. I mean, definitely want a prize mm. uh, in your musical canon. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Be a, tick, tick, uh, ticked off a few things there. Uh, yeah, yeah. But a few more to prize. I, I'm, I'm guessing, or there will be. What once True North comes to its fruition. So the idea behind this is performing relevant songs mm. on high spots of different counties. 
Yeah, uh, I've yet to come up with a snappy uh, kind of uh, <laughs> way of describing <laughs> yes. it. Tagline, yeah. Uh, a snappy tagline, but um, the closest I can get is recording traditional songs of Northern England on their respective county high points. So if any of your listeners would like to come in with a snappier title, I'm <laughs> uh, looking forward to listening to those. But um, yeah, um, recording a Cumbrian folk song on the, the highest point of Cumbria, um, the highest point of Yorkshire, and so on and so forth. So um, there are eight high, eight counties in Northern England, and I've tried to do with each of the songs, try to get a um, to cover as many kind of bases of what uh, to present Northern England in the best kind of light, or the Northern English uh, folk music in a light uh, of its history, of its geography, of its landscape. And so, for example, um, on the highest point of uh, Lancashire, which is uh, might be a contested one for your listeners, actually, if uh, if there's some people who respect the old county borders, but uh, it's not Old Man of Coniston or Coniston Old Man. Uh, it's uh, Gragoroth, which is just over two thousand foot, and it's the um, yeah highest point of Lancashire, uh, which I recorded a song called. Um, uh, it's just uh, the. Um, four Loom Weaver, which um, well, Four Loom Weaver is uh, very much about the the um, you know the mills and the weaving industry uh, in Lancashire, and uh, th- the interesting thing with that particular song is that the melody is taken from um, uh, a Scottish uh, tune, um, and there is a Scottish variant of the song, um, and what happened during the Jacobite uh, rebellions, a lot of uh, musicians in Northern England uh, would actually use Scottish tunes, um, Scottish melodies of tunes to show support for the the Jacobite cause. But with the particular song Fall in Weaver as well, it's... Um, well, with, with Lancashire, especially with all the mills and the and the weaving, that kind of industry wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the hills that surrounded the area and the water that went down. Obviously, the Industrial Revolution was um, also helped by, uh, you know, the transatlantic slave trade as well. So um, our kind of history in Northern England, especially in Yorkshire and Lancashire, is very much kind of connected with the hills and the water that powered the mills and the industry that surrounds, and it's still it's still there today. The effects of that industry, the the mining industry, um, it's part of our DNA. It's part of our makeup. And those murky, muddy waters above the Pennines, um, we drink it. We it's just part of our DNA, and that's that is essentially what the album's about. My goodness, and 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 the and the complexity of that DNA as yeah. well. Yeah. You know, in in all its many and, and some less attractive facets, than Abs- absolutely, and not not shying away from it. Um, and it's um, you know, other other parts of the album. I recorded a, um, a, a Derbyshire folk song on the highest point of Derbyshire, which is uh, Kinder Scout. Uh, that was done a couple of months ago with the BBC Four's Open Country um, uh, program which I recorded a song called The Derby Ram, which uh, which is a, a popular Derbyshire folk song, which is, it's travelled around the world. It was even reputed that George Washington would sing this song to his own kids, so it's, uh, you know, popular and just, and travelled far. Um, it's a humorous song and uh, it's, it's sung uh, at school or even at, um, you know, bawdy football matches, so it's... Um, yeah, we do have some humour in the north, you know. So I'm trying to show that aspect as well too. <laughs> so, I mean, Johnny, you, you're 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 a young guy, and and yet you're 36 you, this month. Well, that's still that's still young. <laughs> that, that's, that's still young. But but, but you, you're you're so steeped in these traditions. I mean, I know, mm. I know you write your own mm. music as well, and your own mm. folk songs. But but you you seem to have such an affinity with these traditional songs yeah yeah well where does that where does that come from do you i mean have you always been drawn to that that type of either tune or lyric or subject matter or whatever hmm i think i think that um 
the things that I'm kind of into outside of music, which is the localized history or uh, hiking in the hills, um, learning about people like like Wayne Wright, uh, learning about the uh, you know, poets who would talk about their their connection with their land. Um, that's something that is just kind of like broadened out into in, into the music, and when you come across um, all that, it's, I, it's only in the I suppose the last few years that I've really tried to delve deep as much as possible into into this. And I think the album True North is uh, when it's released later in the year will be a real kind of um, it's not just a labour of love, but it's it's a real kind of passion. It's not just it's not just an album. It's it's a it's just the lens of like looking into what is what is Northern England. Um, that's the way I kind of look mm. at it. So, what did you see through your lens when you started to look at Cumbria? Then, well, um, I think we were talking about this. Me and Steve were talking about this earlier, and he mentioned that a lot of traditional songs of. Um, of Cumbria tend to lend themselves to a, like more of a fox hunting kind of concept, but for when I've looked into some Cumbrian um, songs, uh, well, the first one I actually ever came came across was this one that I will play, which uh, I got it from a singer from Leeds uh, called Sam Barrett, and he he presumably got it from uh, Maddie Pryor, um, who sang a song called Alish Young by a Broom, and as far as I'm aware, um, maybe your listeners might correct me, or maybe some Cumbrian, maybe yourself, Steve, might correct me on this, but Lish Young by a broom. Uh, Lish means kind of like charming, something like that, and a by a broom is like a travelling tinker kind of thing. So Lish Young by a broom would be um, uh, like the charming young tinker. And uh, the song itself is uh, like a, a lullaby kind of uh, love song. So, uh, yeah, on the album, this is the only song of romance or song of love on there. Oh, we can claim that for Cumbria. Well, we're, we're, we're like that, aren't we, round here? You know, we might not say it often. Romeo Wharton. Exactly, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you trailed all the way up Scarfell Pike with your guitar yes. and your recording equipment yeah. in order to sing this song. Uh, yes, uh, I've been up there a couple of times before without... Um, encumbrances. Sorry? <laughs> encumbrances. Yeah, yeah. And I've uh, been up there a couple of times before without taking the guitar up. Um, we didn't even take the tourist route. It was a route called Piers Gill, which if you've if there's any listeners who know their way up, uh, it's around the back route, which is... Um, it involves some scrambling, and um, my knees were kind of finding... <laughs> well, a couple of weeks after they were still hurting, basically. But um, it was one of those uh, perfectly crisp uh, September days where you could see you could see for miles, basically. And uh, yeah, a couple of hundred people on the summit, and managed to find like a quiet spot to record, which was yeah, the perfect conditions for it. And were you noticed? Did did people clock you and? Were they suitably intrigued? Uh, yeah, there was. Uh, I was unsurprisingly the only person up there with a the guitar at that point. Uh, and there was even one person who even over, I overheard them pointing and saying to their friend, "Is that Ed Sheeran?" And I think it might have been because of the shirt or something. Like well, that. I was about I to say the check shirt mm. potentially. Yeah, I think so. Not the ginger hair, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, but with a hat on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my, well, hey, that's a claim for, for, to fame anyways. Yeah. I was once mistaken for it. Ed Sheeran. Yeah, <laughs> on the top of Scarfell Pike. What he might have been doing on the top of Scarfell Pike is another story entirely. Uh, so, so, I mean, when you got up there, and clearly you're not going to have the place to yourself on Scarfell Pike, unless you're very lucky and you, or you've got up very early mm. or, or something like that, then I suppose do you, do you have to get in, how, how do you get into your zone for for performing, for singing, for feeling it? Um, or, or is it easier it's, because it's, you're outside? It's it's like a triathlon, basically. It's, uh, it's climbing up and then uh, doing the song, carrying the guitar, and then going back down, and then once you've got back down, listening to the, listening to the song back home kind of thing. So it's, um, yeah, it's... I think when you look at the views, it's you, you can get into it, uh, and that's what I've done uh, all the time with these: is 
just play the song three times and for whatever reason it's been the second take that's always worked um and just go go from there and it's it's always it's always worked well well i can't give you three takes no. right now no <laughs> pressure's on right <laughs> no, no absolutely no pressure no but it would be really lovely yeah, if you could for recreate it. for us that moment <laughs> On the summit of Scarfell Pike, I can't, I can't I do, do September of the sunshine. Wind. Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, could you do some back in uh, wind? <laughs> some back in wind yeah. vocals? Yeah. Okay. So let's young by a broom. Walking in the North Country Down by Kirby Stephen I happened for to be As I was walking up and down the street A pretty little by a broom I chance had for to meet She was right, I was tight Everybody has the way It was a lish young by a broom That led me astray Kindly invited me to go a little way Yes was the answer to her I did say There was me with me music up and down the street And her with a tambourine beating hand and feet She was right, I was tight, everybody has that it was a lish young by a broom that led me astray. Straight out for Kendall we steered her and I. Over yon green mountain the weather being dry. A bottle and we filled it to the top Whenever we was feeling dry We took a little drop She was right, I was tight Everybody has the way It was a lish young by a broom That led me astray The night was coming on And good lodgings we did find Eatables of all kind and plenty of good wine Good bed and blankets just for we two I rolled it in me arms, me boys, and wouldn't you do too? She was right, I was tight, everybody has the way It was a lish young by a broom that led me astray Next morning we rose to go our way I called for the landlord to see what was to pay Fourteen and sixpence just for we two A fiver on the table, me darling, then she threw She was right, I was tight, everybody has their way It was a lish young by a broom that led me astray The reason we parted, well, I shall let you hear. She started out for Germany right early the next year. And me being unwilling for to cross the raging sea, is a health to me by a broom wherever she may be. She was right, I was tight, everybody has their way. It was a lish young by a broom that led me, she was right, I was tight, everybody has the way. It was a lish young by a broom that led me astray. Oh, wow. 
I'm on the top of Scarfell Pike. I've been transported. That was wonderful. I mean, it, it must be... Yeah, I'm just thinking about you and all these different places, the, the different counties, and, and you sort of getting yourself into the identity mm. of, of each one, and not to mention the dialect sometimes as well mm. because you know, if you're looking for folk songs that are bound up with a particular place and also bound up with that particular place is it is its yeah, dialect yeah. yeah i mean for example the the one that i did in county durham um i had to enlist uh, the help of a f of a native because <laughs> to of translate the, to yeah i mean to well to to perform uh, some of the verses and uh, they played a bit of mandolin and that was that was by far the hardest one to do, which was a, a twenty over twenty mile walk, um, which we decided to extend as well. But um, yeah, and that's one of the, that's one of the hardest um, mountains to get up in in the whole of Northern England. It's on Ministry of Defence land, uh, so you have to apply to uh, to get your permit upon it, and it's one weekend every uh, every month. And there's only one, uh, no, sorry, only two kind of like routes that they recommend for you to do. But uh, as it took quite a w quite a while to get up there, there's no path, and uh, we had to uh, divert a little bit off the recommended MOD route over potential ordnance to get back. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that on the radio, but if they're listening, but uh, you know, I think a lot of people do that anyway, so that's okay. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody has uh, been, uh, you know, to record an album has uh, been through a minefield. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in County Durham, <laughs> without the rats to <laughs> sniff, yeah, sniff yeah. out the mines for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Johnny, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that revelation. Mm. I've got, I've got to say, but but surely, you know, when you're doing this as well, that 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 ex, the physical graft. Yeah, of of getting to the place mm. as well. That's part of it. Sure, Absolutely, because, yeah. You know, yeah. you're either pretty knackered or mm. or whatever when you yeah, when yeah. you get there. You mm. could be soaked to the skin, depending if mm. you've picked the wrong weather window. Mm. Oh, yeah. So you've got weather. You've got elements. You've got inclines. Yeah. And then you descend. <laughs> not yeah, and luckily so far, not had any particularly. Um, uh, treacherous weather or anything like that I always try and pick the right uh, you know as much as possible as the right days um, and there's, you know, there's, there's nothing been uh, there's only a couple left to do now so uh, once they're done the album will be uh, fingers crossed ready for November mm. really so there's not been a, in, in fact the very first one that I did which was the Cheviot which is the highest point in Northumberland the um, the weather conditions were just actually just too good, uh, so it it felt too much like a studio recording. So uh, just for my own kind of personal um, uh, my own personal take, is just add a little bit of the the wind effect on it because it just it just didn't really match. Oh, so where have you got left? What are the two you've got um, left? Yorkshire, which is uh, the highest pointed Wernside, and I'll be doing Tyne and Weir, which. Um, I think it was, I won't be going to the highest point of Tyne and Weir, I'm going to try and find a particular location which is more linked to the shipyards because I think um, I, I wanted to try and get a song that kind of linked with the um, uh, the, the industry. The shipbuilding industry. Yeah, mm. so um, I've still yet to find the right location for it but I've got the song for it so that will be recorded in the next couple of months too. Oh, so many different facets of of it work in life in what in one you know from agricultural yeah with your rams to you know the the sort of itinerant life as yeah. well with your tinker yeah and and then the different industries yeah all part of that tapestry absolutely and that's what the album that's what the album um is attempting to do is is covering as many bases of that um yeah like you say that tapestry um not only just the song but um going deeper into writing a uh, you know writing the 
writing blogs about it too, which hopefully will come out as a, an accompanying in accompanying uh, kind of like book that goes with it, which uh, delves into more of the history that you can't do within a three and a half minute song. Mm. But and, and also maybe some of your experiences. I mean, we've just had a little taste of well, we've had the Ed Sheeran, and mm. we've had the, the minefield, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's yeah. just in the, <laughs> in the time that you've been in here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant, and 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 I, I'm delighted as well that you are choosing to deepen and extend your Cumbrian connections uh, by getting involved with the Moor Forge Viking settlement and indeed their inaugural folk festival. So this is Johnny the performer and Johnny the organiser. They uh, come hither and play. Yeah, um, the Moorforge Folk Festival will take place at uh, Moorforge Viking Settlement, which is uh, very close to Gilcrew, um, uh, just uh, about five, six miles away from Maryport, something like that. And um, yeah, the Moorforge Viking Settlement, if nobody's, uh, well, if, if your listeners haven't heard of it before, is, uh, is a, uh, an educational centre which hosts uh, workshops and... Also musical events from time to time. Um, but this time on the 7th and 8th of July, it will host its own folk festival, which I'm working with a couple of people of the team uh, there, which um, the festival focus itself on uh, folk music, um, traditional aspects, so traditional music, um, traditional crafts and folklore. So it'll be a combination of music and workshops that... Uh, that kind of tackle all three of those things. So um, the music that we've booked um, has been, yeah, I suppose that kind of like tapestry of the north. So um, Steve sat opposite from me. He um, obviously tackles his uh, Cumbrian uh, roots a lot there. We've also got a band called, um, a duo called the Brothers Gillespie who play a lot of their own material and they're from... Uh, they're from Northumberland and really exciting up and coming uh, act on the on the uh, mainstream folk scene. And uh, Mikey Kenny, who is a uh, Liverpoolian uh, fiddle player, who um, who really well really tackles Merseyside m- uh, fiddle tunes and also Lancastrian songs. Also his own stuff. Uh, Jennifer Reed, who um, involves herself very much in Lancashire weaving songs of the 19th century. But going outside of the of the north, um, uh, I've got an act called uh, Curtis Ellers. Uh, Curtis Ellers American Circus, who uh, is an American artist, and he hasn't been over here for a long time with his uh, full band. So, uh, and he does a lot of old time stuff and. It's just really nice to be able to um, to do a f- uh, to do a festival at such a unique location as Moorforge, but not only that, but just to bring um, a lot of you know the new, exciting, up and coming uh, folk artists of of Northern England and beyond, really. So uh, to a fabulous venue I mean, with that landscape as well. I mean, it's, it's such a brilliant place in between the Solway and the Fells. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, and the site itself is, um, you know, it'll, it'll be an intimate location. Uh, there's a couple of uh, what they call forges, which are basically like well, um, long houses, um, which will be perfect for uh, unplugged and intimate performances. Which uh, you know, performers like myself and Steve, we we, we relish the opportunity to perform in you know, such intimate locations that you really kind of connect with your audience. And I know that this place will bring the best out of these artists. And um, I've never performed anywhere uh, else that's a, a reconstructed Viking settlement. And it's one of my favourite places to perform. And I've I've performed in like well over 20 countries across uh, Europe and beyond. And, uh, yeah, Cumbria is is lucky to have such a place. To be honest, and um, yeah, on the seventh of eighth of July, and uh, able to find out about it. Um, if you Google Mo- uh, Moorforge Folk Festival, it's also on Facebook and There's Instagram. Lots there. mm-hmm. And um, yeah, the tickets are over halfway sold with a few months to go, and uh, we, we anticipate them to go in the next couple of months, if not sooner. Fantastic! I mean, it is. It is a. I mean, it's a hidden gem. 
of a place which might not be hidden much longer after no. <laughs> after this particular festival. And it's well, all these connections you were talking before about you know, how... And I loved that when where you, where you said where you'd heard that Cumbrian folk mm. song, where you'd got it from, and the fact that people are still getting songs from other people in that folk tradition. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, very, it's, much the, it's very much the oral tradition, and it's something that um, it, st- it still happens. Uh, you can still find a lot of people now find songs on online, of course, but. Um, you know, it's it's the oral tradition where people come together, people sing songs, and uh, that's that's also what Moorforge uh, Folk Festival will also be about. It's, it's about um, sharing. There'll be sessions. People are invited to come and perform. Maybe a stage to play some um, of your own songs as well, um, and also workshops as well that focus on folk traditions and folklore. And yeah, it'll just be. It- it sounds amazing. Unique. Well, we'll obviously talk about it more nearer the time as well. Mm. But brilliant that you are involved. I know Steve's got a, a hand to play in all this as well. Will we have time, do you think, for a very short song just before the end? We, we, we have to make sure that we hit the eight o'clock news. But apart from that, we can always we can always fade it out gradually, could we? Right. But before we do, I know Steve, uh, as well as being minder and chauffeur this evening, uh, you want to draw attention to Made in Maryport, which is how Johnny came to be here on Sunday evening in the first place. But it's this amazing series of free events going on in Maryport, uh, uh, well, nearly as we speak. In a couple of nights' time, there's another one. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so um, Johnny came up, continuing the um, uh, the programme of events, which is funded by Historic England, part of the Historic High Streets cultural programme, and funded by Maryport Town Council as well. Um, basically, um, bringing, you know, a bit of life to um, Maryport High Streets and House Streets, um, um, putting on some slightly different events. Um, so we've had Johnny, and uh, then Thursday we've got John Little, who's um, telling oh, us about one of his books, yes, which is a brilliant, brilliant. like maritime adventure uh-huh. involving four Maryport guys. Um, Friday um, 17th, we've got Owen Evans, um, who I used to play with in a band and who's played in pirate metal bands and he's composed. And he's, this is his first solo gig where he's going to be like doing his own compositions and things that have inspired him from like um you know film soundtracks and video game scores as well and then 23rd thursday the 23rd um we've got attila the stockbroker the fantastic punk poet who's bringing his brand of madness up here and he's brilliant um so uh, then i've got a cumbrian pub quiz just before we go back to uh, just before we have another boundary change i'll be doing a great cumbrian pub quiz on the 29th and then one of our great poets kim moore is doing a talk about her um lyric essay what the trumpet taught me award so back to well. the brass band um things it's all about like her experience playing the trumpets mm. in the brass band and all the different like life lessons she got from that and um oh, it's just i love hearing her talk mm. about it so, so yeah again, made in maryport google it yeah it's, it's all free just fabulous yeah come yes. along yeah, Join in. In, in various different venues johnny thank you so much for being with us thank tonight you. as well um with brass band to start with and now without i will let you sort of play as into the news if that's okay yes great uh, a very small introduction with this song which uh, a song called winter hill trespass um and we talked about just very earlier about the uh, what my uh, music's about and uh, just to give a very small introduction of the winter hill trespass it was an event that happened in 1896 on a hill called winter hill next to bolton next to manchester and uh, on september the 6th 1896 10,000 people um, had a protest on the top of Winter Hill to liberate a footpath which had been closed off by a local landowner called Colonel Ainsworth. And uh, this is now known as Britain's largest mass trespass. So this is Winter Hill Trespass. On Sunday will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand came last Sunday, there's room for thousands still. On Sunday will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand came last Sunday, there's room for thousands still. Landman's locked the gate, says you'll have to wait. Your leisure's less important than a grouse upon the plate. I'll let the toffs run free, shooting merrily. I says the grouse has lived on that there more long for you and me. 
Sunday, will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand came last Sunday, there's room for thousands still. On Sunday, will you come for a walk round Winter Hill? Ten thousand came last Sunday, there's room for thousands still. Can't you read the sign? It says all this land is mine. A right of ways, a right of mine. I'll fight for what is right. Coppers come in force, crouch behind the gorse. Heather was a bloomin' as we march for the workers' cause. <laughs>